The Pokemon world is finally ready to evolve in a big way, so let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? Don't get me wrong, Jason Wong. Drop a comment if your name is actually Jason Wong. I look forward to and enjoy playing every new Pokemon game that I can get my strong and manly hands on, but nothing has really made me scream, holy hopips, I need this, I need it now, since reading about how Pokemon Gold and Silver would expand upon the originals in a big way way back over 20 years ago. Because, to put it nicely, each game has been little more than a pleasant but fairly incremental upgrade over what has come before it. And speaking to the trend of the past decade, while the core formula is as fun as ever, the richness of the world building and lore, and the layouts of the regions themselves from an exploration and gameplay perspective have been in fairly obvious decline, in my opinion. But Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, good golly, Miss Molly, these games have potential. So today's plan is to discuss the upcoming video games and why they've got me stoked up like a heat trans armpit. And as always, it is going to be a good time, so kindly subscribe, hit the notification bell awesome, and let's bust out the juicy nuggets. Right after a nifty 60 chat on a cool 3D world building tool that you will want to check out. Of course, I am talking about today's sponsor, Yahaha. Yahaha is a brand new UGC user-generated content platform for interactive 3D multiplayer experiences that empowers you to create and publish your own virtual experiences to be enjoyed by people around the world. And you can build these dream games without even writing a single line of code thanks to Yahaha Studio's robust set of game components and smart assets. For example, here I am building a little Chadu Shadu forest retreat to relax in, and as you can see, it is a piece of cake to drag, drop, and customize content, so I was actually able to get this place together in a jiffy. And while I made a few of my own custom items for this project, Yahaha Studio is also packed with millions of ready-to-use 3D assets stored in the cloud, ready to be beamed in as soon as you need them, which means that it is super fast and super easy to put together cool environments to play around in and show off to your friends. And once your creations are finished, you can easily publish them on Yahaha's mobile and PC cross-platform app so that other players can discover and enjoy your latest masterpieces from both PC and mobile devices. Turning creative ideas into fun, shareable games with Yahaha is a blast, so be sure to get early access to Yahaha Studio for free by clicking the link below. Thank you to Yahaha for sponsoring this video, and with that said, have a blast creating, sharing, playing, and let's venture onward to today's chat. Firstly, I am happy to see a new Pokemon game that Secret Sauce isn't hinged on a flash-in-the-pan gimmick that will soon after become irrelevant. And while the hot, version-specific professors, student at school setup, multiple story tracks, all-terrain vehicles, etc etc are all refreshing twists, something much bigger is at hand here, and that is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's shared adventure and exploration. Elements that are going to transform the series forever, from what I can see. So let's hit these features one by one. At its core, Pokemon is a social experience built on competition, cooperation, and the exchange of information, not to mention that electrifying feeling of participating in something that is bigger than the sum of its parts. Indeed, Pokemon has always been a phenomenon best experienced with others, and that is exactly what has made the lack of solid online functionality over the years somewhat puzzling to fans. Sure, we have been able to do basic battling and trading in the mainline games for ages now, and more recently, play cards over the internet in Pokemon TCG Online. But what about adventuring across the lands, searching far and wide together. Pokemon Go finally brought that joy of adventure to life by physically bringing people together in the real world, but the concept of the shared adventure is a key ingredient of what makes Pokemon special that has always been lacking within the digital worlds of the mainline games themselves. Leaving fan-made projects and competitors to take stabs at the idea while Game Freak has seemingly rested on its laurels. And while Pokemon Let's Go's fairly rudimentary drop-in co-op made a move towards halfway decent shared adventure multiplayer, Pokemon Pokemon Sword and Shield certainly didn't follow up with anything you would want to write your granny about. And as someone who has lived far, far away from my family for most of my adult life, dropping into the odd Diablo 3 run with my brother to adventure through a shared environment while chatting about life has been such a fun way to enjoy something together despite being unable to meet up in person, so never having the chance to savor the joys of exploring an environment together with others online in the Pokemon universe, despite dreaming of doing so ever since I played Ragnarok online in the early 2000s, has been disappointing to say the least. That is, 
until now. Although the full extent of Scarlet and Violet's multiplayer is still under wraps, enough has been revealed about its up to four player local and online co-op to confirm that it will amount to more than simply another fart in the bedsheets. And in Scarlet and Violet's promotional materials, we have seen that at long last, players can bring their own avatars and Pokemon into a real-time shared experience to chill out in town with their Pokemon, explore the lands of Paldea across land, air, and water, and of course, trade and make their animals fight one another. I do wonder if Pokemon Pokemon will ever get the proper subscription MMO treatment that it is practically begging for, but this looks to be the very first time that in-game co-op adventuring is being taken seriously, positioning Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as a huge step forward in terms of how it will allow players to enjoy the games in exciting new ways with friends, family, and weirdos on the internet. And of course, the joy of that multiplayer will be directly linked to the open world in which the exploration will unfold. In 2022, announcing that your fantasy RPG is an open world fantasy RPG is like announcing that your loaf of bread is a loaf of bread. But it was perplexing, well, not that perplexing, that the Pokemon series had not trended towards this structure sooner, given how perfectly it meshes with the franchise's spirit of adventure. So it is a true delight to see this starchy goodness in the oven at long last. As while I personally have no problem with an RPG being quite linear, as long as the story and the lore pack the punch, over the years Pokemon games have become increasingly linear to the point where it almost feels as if you are being funneled down a corridor for much of the game. And worse yet, you are endlessly harassed by NPC characters telling you exactly what to do and how to do it as if you have the brain mass of a sea urchin. And that said, while the Sword and Shield iteration was a case in point example of these flaws, the games did feel out the open world concept with the creation of the wild area. The wild areas were still fairly small controlled spaces that felt vacuous and uninteresting relative to what we have seen Game Freak's fantasy RPG peers deliver on the Nintendo Switch, but they were still pretty fun and definitely a step in the right direction. Then, in early 2022, Legends Arceus kicked down the door to the open world with vast biomes that players were free to roam and fans absolutely loved its sense of scale and meaningful exploration. And now, finally, we have Scarlet and Violet ready to storm past that open world prototype with Pokemon's very first truly open world, fully non-linear, mainline adventure. An adventure wherein you can break away from the story to explore the countryside, travel to its towns, and tackle its gyms in whatever order you choose. The situation reminds me of how Breath of the Wild drew inspiration from the open structure of the original The Legend of Zelda to take the series back to its roots, as the original Pokemon games were actually a fair bit more open-ended than many later games in terms of the order in which you could tackle the game's gym leaders. And even though the games did largely railroad your adventure, the nature of the region event progression and the loops of the map's layout made it seem a lot more open than it actually was. So, like Zelda, perhaps it just took a look over the shoulder for Pokemon to realize where it came from and where it ought to be headed. The open world setup is a perfect fit with the spirit of adventure that practically drips out of the Pokemon universe. And along with the more robust multiplayer, it is going to change how these games are played. And the stage has been set for a big leap forward, a revolution of sorts, after which it seems very unlikely that the games will ever return to that old linear formula. And I am quite excited about that. But to pull the revolution, or rather the evolution off successfully, there are a few things that Game Freak ought to do. For instance, toning down the toddler-oriented handhelding that has spoiled the player's sense of discovery, autonomy, and self-worth for years now, cranking up the world-building and lore to create a rich and believable region that is not just aesthetically pleasing, but actually feels like a real place, filling that world and its towns with interesting events, storylines, and compelling reasons to revisit areas that have already been explored, and making those gosh darn trees look good. Because everyone loves trees that look good. But how about you? Is Scarlet and Violet about to turn the Pokemon universe on its head, and which of the game's features are making your pits sweat the most?